Namaste guys, I hope you all doing great. So in this video, I am going to teach you what are the basics error or mistakes done by the beginner in flute simulation. So first of all, I am going to make a geometry. So make sure that you add SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Okay, in SOLIDWORKS add-in. If you can't able to see SOLIDWORKS add-in, just simply go here, click on add-ins and click on SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Okay, now go to the feature uh, sketches select the front plane click on sketch first thing we need is a, a geometry in which we are going to do flow simulation remember uh, in this video I am basically going to cover the mistakes okay and give the flat diameter radius click ok now go to features click on swap boss base click on circular profile select this path Click on thin because it, uh, it is a hollow pipe and increase the diam diameter to 30 mm and you can increase or decrease the thickness as per your requirement. Click OK. Now save this part. Save the part as per your requirement. Click save. After that, when you go to the flow simulation and click on wizard. Click next, next, internal flow simulation. Okay, the type of flow simulation we are going to do is internal flow simulation. Now click on next. Uh, select the type of liquid you are going to use. Click on water. Click next, next, and finish. Now here you see that I will get an error. The error says that fluid vo volume recognition has failed because the mode currently is not watertight. So basically what it means that my body is not closed body. So because of that I am getting this error. So whenever you do fruit simulation make sure that your body is fully closed. If it is not closed then you will get error like this. Okay. Here you can see. So a question arises: how to make it correct. So to make it correct either you can use create leads uh, to make it a closed body. Or you can just make your uh, geometry closed as per the requirement uh, when you importing it uh, a question now pop up arise that the geometry of model project setting has been changed do you want to reset the computational domain click on yes because now our board is closed click yes here you can see the error is gone now now again now again go to the new wizard because I will show some other mistakes done by the beginners a lot of time so click on the wizard click on next next here you will see a thing called reference axis. So a question arises: what is a reference axis? Reference axis is that axis where you assume uh, the flow simulation is going to occur of yours. For example, if you zoom in here, you will see that this is a, a y axis and this is a y axis. And I am assuming that my flow go from here to this direction. Okay. Remember, I am assuming that my flow goes from upward direction. I am not assuming that my flow goes in this direction. I am assuming that my flow goes from this direction. So this is my reference axis that is y axis. So make sure you select y axis. If I assume my flow is in this direction, then I will choose reference axis y axis because I am assuming that my flow goes from this side. But in this case, I am assuming that my flow goes from y axis to up upward direction. Remember, always make sure that you select the correct reference axis if you select the wrong reference axis you will get wrong results now click on next now here you can select a number of fluids as per your requirements for example one two three four you can choose whatever kind of fluids requirement as per your requirement and if you want to learn how to use more than two fluids uh, just check out the link in descriptions my main aim is here is just to show or tell what is what kind of error you will face now here you will see a flow tab, uh, laminar and turbulent. And if you click on laminar, it means that your flow is only laminar type. It will use only those equations that is considered in laminar. But here I recommend that you use laminar and turbulent. Choose laminar and turb uh, laminar only and turbulent only when you are 100% sure that your flow is laminar. Okay, as don't. Uh, don't use if you don't know whether your flow is laminar or turbulent uh, then use this option laminar or turbulent cavitation basically means uh, that there is a cavitation going on if you <laughs> make sure that you know whether there is cavitation in your flow simulation or not now click on next 
and here is the wall is adiabatic wall okay but you can change it as per your requirement for example heat flux heat transfer rate or wall temperature adiabatic wall means simply means that there is no heat in going in or going out heat flux means that there is a heat transfer okay and you can set heat transfer rate or wall temperature as per your requirement in my case i am assuming there is no heat transfer it is totally normal click on next uh, sometimes people don't uh, specify this condition correctly and wonder why they are getting wrong results. So make sure when you do flow simulation, you must know the boundary condition well of your simulation. For example, this experiment is going to be done at room temperature. So I will define a room, uh, temperature of the fluid at the beginning so that the temperature of my volume geometry will get a proper detail. Okay. If I select free heat flux, it will ask me the value of what is the heat flux is going on. So I can enter the value. Similarly, you can enter the heat transfer rate as per the requirement. Now click on adiabatic wall because there is no heat transfer in my simulation. Here you see that the pressure is 101 that is standard atmospheric pressure and the temperature is 293.2 Kelvin. 293.2 Kelvin is basically means that the temperature is in 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. Or 19 point something Celsius. So click on finish. Now, now other common mistakes done by the beginners is that they doesn't know what is computational domain and just increase or decrease the size, uh, you know, just playing around. So computational domain is basically defined. What is the area of the fluid simulation? Greater the computational domain, higher the time it will take for your fluid simulation. So you need to know what is the reason of fluid simulation and only cover the computational domain as per the geometry requirements. For example, here you can see it covers my whole geometry. So it is a correct computational domain for me. But when you face a large assembly, you will need to increase or decrease the size of computational domain as per your requirements. Now the second thing is boundary condition. That is the most basic thing and here the most time the beginners do the mistakes so how to define a boundary condition simply right click on it click on insert boundary conditions now if I select this face and click inlet mass value and and mass flow rate 0 0.01 kg click ok here you will see I get a error a question arise why I'm getting an error by defining a body or oh, a boundary condition the reason is that SOLIDWORKS doesn't take the fluid computational domain outside. Basically, this flow, uh, the surface I select, it is outside the surface. So, to select it correct way, I need to select from the inside surface. Okay. So, right click on boundary condition, insert boundary condition, select this surface. Now, click on inlet velocity or volume flow rate or, or whatever the uh, your requirements. Okay. So here basically I am assuming that there is a, a mass flow rate. So I am entering a value of 0 0.01 kg. But you can change it as per your requirement. Now here are other things as well. For example, here you will see reference axis. So a question arises, uh, is I correct select the correct reference axis? Here you can see reference axis is x axis. Okay. What if I happen if I select y axis? So basically if I select for example y axis, the fluid will assume that my flow is go in this direction so i will get wrong result so make sure you set correct reference axis now moving downward it's a fully developed fully developed means uh, that you basically get a fully curved type flow simulation now here you can define the temperature of the fluid as per your requirement and any other the parameters for example turbulence parameters or others and here you will see that boundary layer type is turbulent but if you want to change it to laminar you can also do it okay but i select the turbulent because i am assuming the mass flow rate is more than the diameter of pipe so that is the reason i am taking turbulent now click ok after that here i define that this is the place where the, my fluid goes in now a question is where my fluid goes out so i need to define another place where my fluid goes out so click on insert boundary condition select this phase Again, check where, what is the reference axis, that is the x-axis. Now click on pressure openings, click on environmental pressure. So basically my, all my pressure go to the environment pressure, okay. So basically the, at this place my fluid goes out. And again you can define the uh, thermodynamic parameter as per your requirement. Click OK. Now click on goals, click on insert surface goals. 
click on sorry equation goals click equation goals now if i select this uh, if i select inlet mass flow rate here you can see i get these kind of things mass flow rate temperature turbulent intensity but i don't want these what i want is basically how to calculate the temperature difference uh, temperature difference velocity difference and other parameters so to do that first i need to define the surface parameters okay so i need to first tell to uh, first i need to tell the solvers calculate what is the <coughs> velocity at this surface and velocity at this surface and after that i will set equation goals to tell me the difference between them so right click on goals click on surface goals why surface goals because i uh, because i'm selecting a surface and i want what is the velocity uh, what what is the velocity of the fluid at this surface and when you click here you will see different kinds of parameter that is the minimum velocity average velocity so make sure you select average velocity because this is what basically we are going to deal so click on average velocity okay and click okay now here you will see the average velocity simply right click on it enter uh, press f2 and give the name of inlet velocity uh, it will help to reduce any kind of confusion when we use equation goals again click on insert surface goals select this surface click on velocity click ok now again click on it click on outlet velocity uh, so that when we use an equation it will just you know reduce the work of complexity that what is what uh, because these names are easy to understand now if you click on goals you will see point goals volume goals equation goals and globe goals so point goals are used basically when you want to calculate the velocity at a particular point okay uh, if you have heard Euler's approach and, and and there is another approach to calculate velocity and other thing else so this is where the point goals use point goals basically are complex to calculate in real life so basically we use surface goals more oftenly uh, to calculate average values and velocity uh, uh, remember here the point goal is static not moving uh, the moving point goal is more difficult to calculate in real life but a static point goal is easy to calculate in real life okay now let's see how to define equation goal click on equation select outlet velocity here you can see so it is very easy to calculate the goals so just enter the name of the equation goal velocity difference now click ok here you see that uh, I got my equation defined now click on run and make sure that you use all GPU uh, use all CPUs okay here I have 12 threads so you click use all CPUs click on run now it will run the simulation and it will get, take some time now go to the results now most of the time people don't know how to plot graphs or results okay so for example here we plots uh, here I have, I have defined some goals so right click on goal plots click on insert click on all click on show so here you can see i got the velocity difference uh, that is very less uh, very expected because uh, because I doesn't give very high velocity or something else it is very low values all the values are very low so you can see this is the value of average velocity change value okay that is very less or you can say it is not even there uh, you can export to your file excel workbook and you click on export to excel if you want now if you want to see cut plots simply click on inserts and increase uh, increase this that is basically called number of levels higher the number of level higher will you will get the clarity in your graph but remember it will going to increase workload on pc so make sure whatever you do do correctly one more thing that i forgot to tell you that is mesh so higher the quality of mesh higher will you will get the results but remember it will going to take a lot of time to do the calculations there are certain kind of mesh global mesh local mesh basic mesh and basic mesh color so global mesh is used for the whole body 
local mesh is basically used for example i want to calculate just this curved area so at this point i will use local mesh and basic mesh is basically for the basics so make sure that you use correct meshing if you want to learn about more detailing how to do all these things i highly recommend that you check out the link in descriptions uh, to find out all the details okay uh, i hope you learned something from this video if you have any doubts and queries make sure that you ask in comments and thanks for watching and have a great day namaste